Hello and welcome to us in our Tech Bytes. Today I want to talk about the 3D printer companion board that I designed. First of all, huge shout out to Tony W. from Washington for sponsoring a portion of this project. If you too would like your name silk screened on one of our boards or another design that we make, please visit snrtechbytes.com slash donate. I also have a store at snrtechbytes.com slash shop where you can buy some pretty cool stickers. I've also got a few other things for sale on the website, including the 10 kilogram spool holder and a handful of other things that you can purchase directly from us now. Well, let's get started. Okay, so what is this board? Effectively, it's a fancy voltage regulator. It takes 24 volt in from your 3D printer's power supply. It outputs 12 volts in order to control a PC fan, and it outputs 5 volts in order to power Raspberry Pis or other 5 volt devices. This power supply is capable of outputting 20 watts, so it is capable of powering a Raspberry Pi 4, and I have been using this extensively on my Raspberry Pi 4 to power it for a couple weeks now. It outputs directly across these three USBs, so you can plug your Raspberry Pi in. I've also got a camera plugged in here that watches my 3D printer and room for expandability if I want to plug something else in in the future. This 5 volt power supply also powers a string of NeoPixels which are controlled by this Adafruit Metro Mini and they connect to this plug here. And then this plug is where the fan connects to and is powered by the 12 volt regulator but the Adafruit Metro Mini is capable of outputting the 25 kilohertz PWM frequency to actually control the speed of the fan. This plug up here allows you to connect a couple of buttons that you can mount to your 3D printer somewhere, which allows you to turn the light and the fan on directly through these buttons, as well as have indicators on each individual light if you would like. And finally, this connector down here is for connecting GPIO pins from your Raspberry Pi to the Adafruit Metro Mini. This will allow you to turn the lights on and off with your Octoprint interface. I use the Enclosure plugin, which I'll show you how to use later in this video. There's a couple extra features on this board. I've got three LEDs hidden underneath here. There's two green LEDs, one signifying that the 5 volt rail is okay and one signifying the 12 volt rail is okay. And then there's a red LED and that's a reverse polarity LED. I've actually got a reverse polarity diode hidden in here so that if you plug in the connector backwards, it will save all of your electronics and save your Raspberry Pi. I've tested this, not on purpose, and it works. I've got the capacitor required to allow NeoPixels to start up a little bit softer and help kind of smooth some of the power. And finally, I've actually got this little potentiometer here, which allows you to control the voltage coming out of your 5 volt regulator. One thing I noticed through this process is that Raspberry Pi is actually like a 5.25 volt power supply, otherwise you, get, otherwise you get that little lightning bolt that says that it's losing power. So by turning this with a screwdriver, you can set it to exactly the right power. All of the resistors are on the back here, and I've got the values of each one of those resistors on the GitHub along with this board and the bill of materials so you can build your own. This is Rev1 of the board. I've got Rev2 designed, which should be showing up on your screen now, and that's the one that's available on my GitHub. There's a handful of quality of life improvements, including changing the footprint for this voltage regulator, putting an actual barrel connector in here, and uh, redesigning some of the traces to be a little bit more friendly and better suited for an application like this. I've also designed a 3D printed enclosure for this. It allows the board to slip in right here, and then it's got a lid which allows all of the connectors to pass through, as well as a little bit of venting for the regulator since when it's running at high current, it does get relatively warm. This can be stuck to the bottom of your enclosure in any way, however you want, but all the USBs are accessible. This will be a barrel plug for you, but the connector is accessible, and finally all of these pins are accessible as well. I'm also working on a Revision 3, which uses a different voltage regulator. Unfortunately, this voltage regulator, because it's isolated, is relatively expensive, so in order to make the cost a little more friendly to somebody who wants to do this themselves, I'm working on a Rev 3, which is going to have a completely different voltage regulation structure, but will still output enough current to power a Raspberry Pi 4 and a handful of other devices as well. I'm not exactly sure when that's going to come out, but hopefully soon. But in case you wanted to get started now, this version works fine, and you can download the files from my GitHub, linked in the description below. 
So in order to configure the Enclosure plugin to control the 3D Printer Companion Board, the first thing we're going to do is log into our Octoprint interface. We're going to go to Settings. We're going to go to Plugin Manager. We're going to click Get More, and we're going to look for Enclosure Plugin. I've already got it installed, so it's not going to appear for me. But once you get it installed and restart your Raspberry Pi, you're going to come to Enclosure Plugin. And you're not going to have anything in here just yet, so you're going to come down and you're going to see an Add Output button. You're going to click this Add Outputs button. You're going to say Regular I.O. You can label it whatever you want. I labeled my end Fans and Light, but I'm going to just label this one Light for now. Next, you're going to put in the GPIO that you want to control with the Enclosure plugin. In my case, I'm using GPIO pin 23. And there's a number of other settings here. So the way the microcontroller is configured, we actually have active high, so we're going to uncheck this active low button. And then there's a few other options that we can put here as well. I usually use auto startup and auto shut down. What this allows it to do is as soon as I start a print, it turns the lights and the fan on, and as soon as I stop a print, it turns the lights and the fan off. It's a really easy way for me to notice if the printer is complete because I can look in from the other room and notice that all the lights are off. You can hide the UI button, you can show the button in the nav bar, and that just brings this little box up here that allows you to control everything digitally. And once you've got that set up, you should be good to go from within the Enclosure plugin. Now that everything's configured, we can come over and we can turn the lights and the fan off just by clicking this button up here, turn the lights on. And then we can click the, the fan button and turn the fan on. And what you notice is it, is it also turns on the indicators in the front of the 3D printer. We can go back through and turn them off. And what's cool is they work in conjunction with the manual controls. So if I come over here and I click the light button, it'll turn the lights on. If I click the fan button, it'll turn the fan on. But if I come back into software, they're going to say they're off. But if I turn it on and then turn it off again, it'll turn the lights off. And the same is true for the fan. If you made it this far through the video, I just wanted to uh, tease a little project I'm working on with BPS Space. I'm actually currently designing a White Knight carrier vehicle for his Launcher 1 model rocket. It's going to be a pretty exciting project. Uh, I have no idea when it's going to be finished, but a lot of pro progress is being made over the last uh, couple weeks. So, um, so stay tuned for more information on this project. Thanks for watching, and until next time, don't get lost in the noise.